welcome back students <clears throat> so in this chapter is matter around us pure we have completed all the discussion topics okay i have uh, discussed all the topics which are related to this chapter now today i am posting the pdf notes for this chapter okay so the ncrt solutions all the questions ncrt solutions is been provided to you in this pdf you have to copy it down in your classwork copy okay and as soon as you are giving or uh, you are getting this pdf please download it okay please download it and keep it in safe uh, place such as in your google drive or in your uh, documents of your mobile phone uh, okay but i will prefer that uh, to keep it in your google drive because in google drive you will never miss this particular pdfs so i will suggest you that keep all your pdf notes in your google drive only make a gmail account okay and using that gmail account you will get a google drive space there use that google drive space to store your notes because if uh, in the case from your mobile all the, your pdfs are getting uh, deleted na then also you will find all these pdfs which are stored in your google drive easily okay so try to uh, keep all your pdf notes which are provided by us in your google drive only okay now let's as i am going to uh, provide you today the pdf notes so in today's video i am going to discuss about this uh, particular questions which uh, is been present in your ncrt and what are their answers i am going to discuss about them only okay so let's start as this is your chapter number 2 this is your chapter number 2 okay and uh, the name of this chapter is chapter number 2 and the name of this chapter is is matter around us pure okay so i am going to give you the ncrt solutions for the questions which are present in your ncrt so for the page number 15 of your ncrt book the exercise number 2.1 let's start okay so here uh, you will get you will get uh, the first question that is what is meant by substance okay the first question here is what is meant by substance so the substance here the substance here the answer will be here a uh, substance uh, it is the it is a pure single form of matter okay substance is defined as a pure single form of matter okay you can also write it like this that substance is defined as okay it is defined as substance is defined as pure single form of matter okay pure single form of matter a substance has definite property and composition okay the composition and the properties of a substance are definite means it does not change with time or uh, with the uh, different composition okay they does not change for example we can take iron carbon okay example or uh, more examples can be taken oxygen and etc okay list the point of points of difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture this is your second question in your page number 15 exercise 2.1 okay the second question is list the points of difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures okay so here the answer will be we have to differentiate between the homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture here okay so the answer here it will be answer becomes here homogeneous mixture heterogeneous mixture we have formed two different columns for them one column is for homogeneous mixture and one column is for your heterogeneous mixture here. okay now uh, we have to uh, differentiate between them so the first uh, part here the first uh, uh, is the particles are uniformly distributed throughout the mixture means we are defining the homogeneous mixture so in homogeneous mixture what is there 
the components or the particles which are contained in this type of mixture they are uniformly distributed throughout the mixture okay they are uniformly distributed throughout the mixture in the case of heterogeneous mixture what is there all the particles are completely all the particles are completely mixed okay they are completely mixed but they can be easily distinguished they can be distinguished with our bare eyes only okay without any instrument use of any instrument we can easily distinguish them or we can also use a microscope also okay we can also use a microscope for some type of heterogeneous mixture such as colloid and all that okay what is the second point which is here has a uniform composition okay it has a uniform composition while in case of heterogeneous mixture it will have a irregular composition means ununiform non-uniform composition will be there okay you will see that heterogeneous mixture can be uh, easily uh, as they can be easily distinguished all the components of a heterogeneous mixture can be easily distinguished it means the composition of there is it is irregular okay next no apparent boundaries no apparent boundaries or division or the of division is present okay in case of homogeneous mixture you will not see that the particles that the particles are having any apparent boundaries okay they are not having any kind of apparent boundaries of division for example if i am taking a solution i am taking a solution of water and salt i am taking a solution of water and salt okay let's say i have taken here water and in, in it i have dissolved salt here so we will not see salt or water different okay differently we will not see yeah, this particular solution will uh, be seen as a one single component it means that you will see that only water is present here up till and until you have tasted it on tasting it only you will feel that saltiness is present in our water it means that salt has been dissolved in it but by our eyes by our uh, visible visibility if you want to distinguish then it is not possible to distinguish it it means that no apparent boundaries of division between two components will be seen out here but in case of but in case of heterogeneous mixture for example if i am taking a container in which water is there i have taken water and sand is been mixed with it okay sand particles is been mixed with it so what will happen the sand particles if are left for some time okay after mixing if the sand particles are left for some time then what will happen the whole of the sand particles will settle down okay the whole of the sand particles will settle down and the water will and the water will uh, be collected in the upside of the sand particles so here you will see a distinct boundary okay here you will see a distinct boundary between the two components here the components are water and sand here okay but in case of but in case of homogeneous mixture that that no type of boundary is been seen out okay let's move further and have the next question the next questions are from your page number page number 18 exercise 2.2 okay ncrt book page number 18 and uh, ncrt book page number 18 exercise 2.2 so here the first question is distinguish uh, sorry differentiate between homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture with examples so all the other points we have discussed before also in the previous question also the same question was there okay uh, only a thing is added here that example we have to ha add here so the uh, first example for your heterogeneous mixture is sea water okay sea water is an example and the blood is also an example in blood red blood cell platelets and wbc white blood cells all these are combined together to form blood okay so it means it is a type of heterogeneous mixture because the composition the composition of blood is not regular okay by centrifugation we can easily differentiate or we can easily separate all the uh, components contained in a blood blood similarly the sea water the sea water is also not having a, a, a distinct a undifferentiable con component composition okay so the components of sea water can also be distinguished easily next rain water 
in rain water many of the minerals are dissolved but uh, when we collect rain water in a container then you will see that it looks like only a single uh, only a pure water only okay we cannot distinguish that uh, any type of uh, any other soluble uh, soluble substances are present in rain water okay vinegar vinegar is also an example uh, in vinegar what is there ch3cooh this is the formula for your vinegar and it is been mixed with water okay vinegar is acetic acid plus water okay so here uh, we cannot see acetic acid uh, uh, distinguishing in this uh, particular vinegar solution okay this vinegar is a type of solution only which is uh, where acetic acid acetic acid this ch3cooh is acetic acid okay so it is been mixed with water in order to form this vinegar but uh, we cannot uh, uh, by our bare eyes we cannot distinguish that uh, this uh, vinegar or acetic acid uh, this uh, vinegar is containing this acetic acid and water we will uh, see that only water like substance is present there okay so this has been uh, added only one topic is uh, one point is been added there that is the example point okay or rather all the points are same okay all the points are same next ah one more thing uh, one uh, but, uh, uh, mistake has been done by here might be might uh, might be done by me or that here the numbering will be 1 2 3 and 4 okay so by mistake uh, this 6 7 8 has been written out here so while writing beta please uh, rectify this thing here also 1 2 3 4 and four. it will be like this okay rectify this thing uh, by mistake uh, during uh, the um, formation of pdf i think so this mistake has been occurred by me so please rectify this thing. okay the number will be only 1 2 3 4 only okay on both the sides not this 4 5 6 7 8 okay next the next question is page number 18 exercise 2.2 please how are how are sol solution and suspension different from each other okay we have to differentiate between sol solution and suspension okay so let's differentiate all this uh, between this three substances okay so four columns i have made first column is for attributes or the properties on the basis of which i am distinguishing all these three second is the sol okay second column is for the sol third column is for the solution okay and fourth column is for your suspension okay so let's start first the first property on which or the attribute okay we can call it as attribute also so the first property on which we are distinguishing all these three are type of mixture okay type of mixture so here uh, sol is a type of heterogeneous mixture it is a type of heterogeneous mixture solution it is a type of homogeneous mixture okay solution is a type of homogeneous mixture while suspension is also a type of heterogeneous mixture okay because in both this condition in the condition of sol and in condition of solution in both this condition the particles the particles okay you can see in the next point that the size of the particles in condition of sol it is 10 to the power minus 7 to 10 to the power minus 5 cm similarly in case of suspension they are more than 100 nanometer okay so in both the conditions the particles are greater than 1 nanometer if the particles are greater than 1 nanometer then it is a heterogeneous mixture only because then the particles then the solute particles can be easily distinguished by some of the physical methods okay or by microscopic way next third condition is the tyndall effect okay so what was tyndall effect tyndall effect was the effect when light particles when light is been thrown on a solution or a homogeneous or a mixture then if the particles if the suspended particles are scattering the light rays okay they are scattering the light rays then that particular effect was known as tyndall effect okay so this uh, effect uh, we can see from our ventilation when the sunlight passes through the ventilation there also the air particles the air containing the particles is been seen out there but naturally we cannot see by our natural uh, in naturally uh, we cannot see that air is containing any dust particles but when uh, the sun ray uh, from very small space comes out there from the ventilation or from any other opening there you will see that Uh, the uh, the dust particles which are present in air they are visible there okay so this effect is known as tyndall effect so in sol it is exhibited in sol it is exhibited but in true solution or solution it is not exhibited 
okay and in suspension also sometime it may be exhibited or sometime it may not be exhibited because the suspension is containing the uh, substances that are more than 10 to the 100 nanometer okay so in this condition sometimes the light ray may pass and sometimes the light ray may not pass through them so when the light ray will pass through them so and scattered scattered then maybe we can see that indal effect but if the light ray is not passing through the given suspension then what will happen we will not observe the we will not observe the tyndall effect next is the appearance fourth point is the appearance so usually glassy and clear the salt solution the salts are generally glassy and clear means uh, you cannot uh, distinguish the particles by your naked eyes there. okay while in case of uh, solution they are unclouded and clear they will be unclouded and clear but in case of suspension they will be cloudy and opaque it means that if you are throwing light on it so the light will also not pass through them and they will be having a cloudy structure okay it means they will be having a cloudy structure means uh, you cannot see through it okay seeing through that particular solution or suspension it is very hard next visibility so visible with an ultra microscope the particles present in sol the solute particles present in sol can be easily visible with an ultra microscope but uh, while in case of homogeneous mixture it is not visible okay it is not visible because with using with an ultra microscope also it is very uh, hard to see huh. but by micro uh, electron microscope we can see the particles of homogeneous uh, mixture uh, solution okay next visible with naked eyes suspension particles are visible with naked eye only okay it does not require any kind of device or any special instrument to uh, say that a given solution is a, a suspension the particles of the solute are very easily uh, seen by your naked eye only next is the diffusion next is our diffusion so diffusion yes the salt diffuses very slowly okay in solve in solve the diffusion process will be very slow while in case of solution it will rapidly diffuse because all the particles are here less than one nanometer so it will rapidly diffuse out while in case of suspension they do not diffuse they does not show diffusion okay next is the stability so sol are pretty st pretty stable they are pretty stable means uh, due to the presence of uh, small particles they are generally not uh, volatile they are stable while uh, the solutions are highly stable you cannot see the particles which are moving inside it so therefore they are highly stable you will see that you uh, it will be like that no kind of uh, motion or all these things has been happening in the solution while in case of uh, uh, suspension the particles uh, motion of the particles is easily seen okay so it means it is uh, unstable next is the settling so in case of sol the centrifugation process is the uh, process after which the components of the sol will get settled down okay after the centrifugation process you will see that the sol particles are being settled down but while in case of solution after using any of the method they will not settle down any of the solute there will not settle down by any physical process okay they require some of the chemical process but in case of uh, solution uh, sublimation uh, sorry uh, but in case of your suspension if it is been left for some there some time okay if it is been left for some time undisturbed then what will happen there there the particles will there the particles will submit there the particle will settle down slowly okay the next is the okay the next is the examples for sol the examples can be milk blood smoke etc generally salts are colloids okay they are colloids so the milk blood and smoke they are colloids only okay next is suspension suspension sand in water dusty air and all these are example of your suspension while the solutions example can be salt solution or the sugar solution okay now let's move to the next question it is a numerical okay the next question is a numerical the next question is a numerical okay so let's see it okay so this numerical is related to the concentration of the solution okay so the question is asking here to make a saturated solution 
थर्टी सिक्स ग्राम ऑफ सोडियम क्लोराइड ओके सोडियम क्लोराइड मीन एन ए सी एल सोडियम क्लोराइड थर्टी सिक्स ग्राम ऑफ एन ए सी एल इज डिजोल्व इन हंड्रेड ग्राम ऑफ वॉटर ओके इट इज बिन डिजोल्व इन हंड्रेड ग्राम ऑफ वॉटर एट टू नाइनटी थ्री कैलविन ओके एट टू नाइनटी थ्री कैलविन टेम्परेचर थर्टी सिक्स ग्राम ऑफ एन ए सी एल इज डिजोल्व इन हंड्रेड ग्राम ऑफ वॉटर वी हैव टू फाइंड यर द कंसेंट्रेशन ऑफ दिस सोल्यूशन एट दिस पर्टिकुलर टेम्परेचर ओके सो हियर दिस टेम्परेचर इज फॉर कूलिंग यू वन ओके नो यूज ऑफ टेम्परेचर इज हियर विथ इन फाइंडिंग दिस कंसेंट्रेशन ऑफ सोल्यूशन ओके इट इज ओनली हियर टू डिस्ट्रैक्ट यूर माइंड इन दिस क्वेश्चन दिस पर्टिकुलर वैल्यू ऑफ दिस टेम्परेचर इज फॉर डिस्ट्रैक्टिंग यूर माइंड ऑनली ओके सो हियर फर्स्ट थिंग द मास ऑफ सॉल्यूट इज गिवन इट इज थर्टी सिक्स ग्राम्स द मास ऑफ सॉल्यूट इज थर्टी सिक्स ग्राम्स ओके द मास ऑफ सॉल्वेंट इज हंड्रेड ग्राम्स द मास ऑफ सॉल्वेंट इज हंड्रेड ग्राम्स ओके सो द टोटल मास ऑफ द सोल्यूशन विल बिकम थर्टी सिक्स प्लस हंड्रेड इज इक्वल्स टू वन हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी सिक्स ग्राम्स ओके हियर यू कैन सी इट वन हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी सिक्स ग्राम्स इट इज गिवन सो वी नो दैट द कंसेंट्रेशन ऑफ द सोल्यूशन If I am going to find out the mass percentage here, okay. If I am going to find out the mass percentage here, then the formula was mass percentage is equals to mass of solute divided by mass of solution into hundred. Okay. So the mass of solute is given here thirty six. Total mass of solution we have calculated it is one thirty six into hundred. Okay. So On uh, cancelling it here, we will get cancel for four three times four four are three times twelve one six four times thirty four and from getting cancelled four it will be nine times so thirty four divided by nine nine hundred okay so on dividing thirty nine hundred divided by thirty four and it will be in percentage so the answer will come twenty six point four seven percentage. so hence the concentration of the solute that is nacl in our solution is 26.47%